Welcome to the International Internship University, the world's first virtual university, which is concocted by the visionary Piyush Pandit. The vision of Piyush Pandit is to take education to students, and not students to education, for the betterment of society. He has just one dream, no child should be deprived of education. To fulfill the dream, he has worked 24 by 7, and the dream came into reality in the form of International Internship University. Through his concerted efforts, Piyush Pandit has made the education so facile through IIU, that the learner from any corner of the world, from any university or college, can avail it, as per their needs and comfort, at a very nominal rate. International Internship University is building a better and brighter future for all young learners, and is committed to providing quality, skill-based, affordable, accessible and location-independent education to all the young learners of the globe, by providing internship opportunities. International Internship University is metamorphosing the conventional education system, by cutting down the additional costs and providing access to more than 1,000 plus courses and internships to their e-learners. Across 195 countries and 6 continents, throughout the year with over 150 virtual offices around the world. IIU has been accredited and affiliated with the World Education Organization, WEO, and International Accreditation Organization, IAO, and collaborated with all the world's top universities and educational institutions. Through the platform of MOOC, Massive Open Online Courses, with the aim of promoting internships and making modern education easy, accessible and affordable. IIU provides honorary degree, master's degree, graduate degree, certificate and diploma courses, professional education, customized programs, free courses, sustainable development goals courses, non-academic courses, blockchain technology learning lab and many more. The entire curriculum of the IIU is skill-based on the ethos of high academics, with the help of MOOC technology. Our country directors are constantly bonding with the corporate sector worldwide, whether it's MNCs or international job providers. This is done not only to benefit the students of that particular country, but also to benefit the schools or colleges which are affiliated to us. All the students and colleges will be given the support like, online training, virtual knowledge exchange, internship opportunities worldwide, placement assistance. IIU is committed to providing stress-free education, with internship and entrepreneurship opportunities, without any financial burden on the learners and their family members. International Internship University, after its inception in Australia, India has become the main hub of its operations. Mr. Piyush Pandit, co-founder and COO of IIU, India, and chairman of Swarna Bharat Parivar. Piyush Pandit concocted the world's first internship university, the International Internship University. The world's first virtual university that emplace internships as preeminent precedents. Piyush Pandit had a dream to provide idea of free education to learners across the world from the year 2017. After two years of continuous hard work and efforts, the research about the establishment of International Internship University has been completed in the year 2019. In 2020, IIU received the Certificate of Grant Innovation Patent, Australia under the Patent Act 1990. Innovation Patent Certification from WIPO Proof ISO Certified 9001, 2005 and IAO Accredited International Internship University is duly registered in 2021 by Certificate, Section 60. Further, IIU has been registered in India and USA. International Internship University has formed various councils to address specific issues faced by students, youths, women, and in the field of education. International Student Development Council Objective of this council is to help, guide, and motivate the students. 
The council is made to ensure that the voice of the students is not suppressed. Building a sense of community is the essence of the International Student Development Council. International Youth Development Council is formed with the objective of improving the lives of children and adolescents by meeting their basic physical, developmental, and social needs and by helping them to build the competencies needed to become successful adults. IIU Women Entrepreneurs Council recognizes the incredible skills possessed by a woman, respects their self-worth, and intertwines it with entrepreneurial skills to give a woman the power to create magic, magniloquence, and money with her skill sets. IIU Women Entrepreneurs Council is giving an opportunity to every woman on this globe to witness the uncultivated talents within her, to be the successful women entrepreneur. International Council for Educators recognizes the contribution of educators all over the world in the field of education, and encourages them to be a part of it and to change the lives of many more by imparting quality education and spreading knowledge worldwide. IIU is for everyone. Whatever you covet to be, whatever you crave to do, whatever you yearn to study, without any financial stress. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the respected dignitaries of IIU. Distinguished our speaker, honorable participants and the loving audience present here from all around the globe. I'm Ms. Nada Radkovic, Country Director, Croatia, IIU Board Member. Welcome you all to this workshop by International Internship University, the first global virtual university of fair and quality, accessible location, independent skill-based education around in all areas. It's my honor to introduce you the team of IIU, the strong support of IIU, who are all working consistently to achieve the vision and mission of IIU by bringing the new era of education all over the globe. The inspiration of IIU, Shri Dandi Swarniji Mahajarai and his blessing and his guidance in every of IIU evening. Our trustees of IIU, Dr. Roshni Lal, Ms. Andrew Pandit, our visionary co-founder and CEO, Mr. Piyush Pandit, the man behind the success of IIU. A uh, little later, we will go through all our uh, members of IIU, and it's my honor to present them. Now, I would like to present uh, one woman who is to today uh, with us and will make a workshop. That is Dr. Professor Siham El Katafi a founder of Arose Research Consultancy Limited. She is an entrepreneur, educator, businesswoman. She is passionate about making difference in the lives of her students and clients. She started her company in June 2014 with the aim of sharing her mentoring, training, coaching experience through tailored programs serving her clients and their needs. She has a wide industry and a consultancy experience in the medical, manufacturing and service industry besides being an academic for the past 24 years. She is a passionate educationalist and thought leader who helped graduate over 10,000 students over her career. 
her teaching experience plays a leadership role in the creation of high quality student experience in a wide range of business management and adult education RCs. Moreover, various academic positions as a head of academic faculty, business, field, finance, and English, director of research, senior lecturer, guest lecturer in various universities and institutes overseas in New Zealand and Singapore, the University of Makoto Manikou, prof and etc. <laughs> Professor Dr. El Katafi holds a PhD. PhD from the University of New Zealand, a master's in adult literacy and numeracy education from University of Technology, a master's of public administration from American University. She's public, a motivational speaker who is invited in many, in many events, in many conferences, uh, national, international, as a speaker. More than 100 publications in journals, book chapters, and conference proceedings. Professor Dr. El Katafi is awarded professor, performance based research fund. She got awarded from them in New Zealand 2013 and May 2007. Let us see. We can talk about our professor, Dr. El Katafi, uh, whole day, but uh, we are here today to be a participant and to listen her workshop. Professor Dr. Sikham, the IAU stage is yours. Hi, and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you very, very much, Nada, for uh, your introduction. I'm humbled uh, by your words. Uh, God bless you. Thank you. No, I wouldn't want you to stay the whole evening talking about me. Thank you. Uh, thanks for all the participants. Uh, I would like to share with you my uh, my PowerPoint. Uh, I hope I am clear to everybody, and uh, also you can see my PowerPoint. Okay. Um, as you all know, I come from New Zealand, uh, and right now it's the evening here in New Zealand. It's in lots of other places. It's early morning or maybe middle of their day. Uh, I come from Auckland, uh, New Zealand, which is in the North um, Island. It is uh, my pleasure uh, to talk to you today. Uh, my topic is going to be about identifying the role of a theory in research. So uh, which context I will be talking from is that I would like to uh, discuss how actually theory helps and decides your approach uh, for your research design. Also, how theory could inform your research <laughs> question and research objectives. Um, this is an interactive uh, workshop. So uh, I am not going to be talking all the time. I would like also uh, your collaboration and uh, your sharing with your opinions and ideas. And I'll have a few activities because I would hate it that you would sleep from me. Um, so by the end of this workshop, uh, what we are going to be answering is uh, those questions. What is the link between theory and research? What is theory? Uh, the importance of theory? How do we develop a theory? Uh, the different types of uh, theoretical contributions, uh, the purpose of research, and uh, uh, how are you going to write a proposal? It is a research a proposal, it, uh, and it's structure. So at the end, you will be doing that. I hope that everybody either have got their computers uh, beside them ready that they can type, or a paper and pen that they can use. Some people still, uh, even though with that, technological era, they still write on paper and pen. So I would like to uh, start with an opening question and say that if, uh, have you ever thought about this whole world? Uh, how uh, could we be surviving without any progress, uh, without any technological advancements? Um, we are taking lots of things nowadays actually for granted. Um, the simple things that we are doing nowadays and taking for granted. It was actually uh, developed 
through um, tedious uh, lots of years of uh, the work of researchers, uh, creators, uh, innovators, who actually developed uh, all these things that with the snap of a finger, we use them. Uh, one of them is uh, the technology that you are using right now. I am here in New Zealand and you are in different uh, parts of the world and still we can communicate and we can connect and uh, connections and connectivity among human beings is actually uh, very important for our progress, our development, and our survival in this uh, age and era we're in. So um, if we are going to look at research and what, what is the value, what is the importance of, of research for me, for you, for everybody, it is actually integral to uh, our everyday life. Uh, we research anything uh, before we uh, do it. So for example, if you want to buy um, glasses, if you want to buy your uh, little gadget mobile, you want to buy a laptop, you want to buy any piece of equipment or any piece of furniture or clothing or anything, you actually, uh, you research it. Uh, you go and do your due diligence. Uh, you look at it, you look at the varieties, look at the options. Uh, in order to be able to make a, a well-informed decision. Is it value for money? Uh, does it have the uh, specifications? Does it serve you, uh, serve your purpose, what you need? But unfortunately, uh, there are lots of people who get apprehensive when they hear uh, the word research, and especially in the academic world, uh, uh, whether it is students, undergraduates, postgraduates, or even uh, some of the uh, uh, lecturers in universities uh, when it is a requirement for them uh, in order to have progression, in order to move forward in their career, it's a requirement. So some of the people believe it's tedious. Uh, they try to evade it. They don't want to go near it. They don't want to do it. And um, if only they know that they already do it automatically in, in their everyday life. And it is actually essential and vital for all aspects of our life, whether it is personal or professional. Uh, in this case, I believe that they will really change their attitude, uh, change the perception of research, and we will enjoy conducting it. So what are the basic uh, purposes uh, for research, if we're going to look at it? The first thing, as I mentioned, is to inform action. So you want to make uh, a decision, you want to take an action uh, about uh, uh, doing anything in your life, in your career, making a decision, so it helps you. You need to research uh, what's happening, uh, uh, what about this topic, uh, how are you going to move forward? So it is not only for purchasing your essential things in life, but it's also making decisions in your life. And it's also to prove a theory. So we all sometimes have theories and we want to prove it. Is it uh, right or is it not right? Like for example, relativity theory, the Big Bang theory, there are lots of theories. Uh, also, it is to contribute to a developing uh, a, a specific uh, body of knowledge in your field. So if we're going to look at leadership, for example, uh, there are thousands now of uh, theories uh, and adding to the body of knowledge of the different styles of leadership. Uh, we started from uh, um, the, the big man theory, uh, then we started from situational theories, we started contingency theories, uh, we looked at autocratic, democratic, laissez-faire, uh, um, servant leader, and uh, honesty leadership, uh, ethical leadership, and it is nonstop. We're always adding to this body of knowledge, which demonstrate that we are moving forward. Um, human beings tend to move forward through conducting research and adding to the body of knowledge uh, whatever type of theory. And I can see that 
lots of the people attending today are educationalists. Uh, they can be uh, with uh, young children or they can be also with adults and also feeds and helps. Uh, in the field of education, like uh, or any other field, like organizational behavior or science and technology and all fields. So um, uh, if we are going to look at what value is uh, research adding or what is its importance, it is that we would like always, we are in pursuit of understanding we want to rationalize and understand why things are happening in a certain way. Or we may have a problem and we may want to find a solution for it. We try to research different uh, scenarios, different types of solutions. Uh, maybe we are confused uh, or we're not sure uh, what is the truth behind anything. If we are going to look at uh, criminal justice, uh, the law and order and all these things, if you want to find the truth behind uh, um, something that happened or a phenomena, you need to go and research it in order to clarify uh, that confusion. Uh, also, to give yourself an opportunity to have a better understanding of whatever subject uh, you're interested in, uh, you're studying, uh, uh, or uh, in your field, uh, um, in your organization, for your own progress, uh, for uh, the betterment um, in your organization too. Uh, also, you are trying uh, to find the differences between the good, the bad. Uh, you're trying to learn things through also analysis. Uh, you are trying to prove your practice. Uh, when we talk in the field of total quality management, we always talk about continuous improvement. And continuous improvement always happens in the cycle of the PDCA cycle, for example, and that happens through research. You are looking at your process, analyzing it, and see what's happening there. How are you going to improve on it? So you are researching. That's another type of research. You're looking at what's happening. You're analyzing it step by step. And you are adding to the body of knowledge by proposing a new way of doing it. So that is you're improving on that process in order to improve on your access. This is just to name some of the values and the importance of research either for us personally or for our careers. So you would come and ask, so what is the relationship between theory and research? Uh, we need to look at that in order to link it, tie it. So what is it is that we can say that theory is integral to research and also research is integral to theory. So. The theory guides the development of our research question. We all know if you want to start from anywhere to do research, you have to have a research question. So research helps to generate new theories. And it also helps you to determine, are you going to support this theory that is existing or not support it? Is it correct or incorrect? I like this uh, saying by Dudley, um, the best theories are those that have been substantiated or validated in the real world by research studies. So if we look at any of, for example, of the management theories, um, one of the most popular one, and correct me uh, if I'm wrong, uh, is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You see, all the fields, uh, borrow from each other. So um, that is, um, it is a, psycho a psychological theory, the pyramid of Maslow, and it is borrowed and used in organizational behavior. And management usually refers to it as a means of finding out what is the best way of motivating their employees. So, uh, I don't believe that Maslow just uh, slept and woke up 
and decided uh, about that theory. No, it happened as a, uh, after results of a lot of studies. And I believe that uh, it started from the Hawthorne studies where people started looking how to motivate their workers in the factories and the dimming of the light. I'm sure that lots of you know about the Hawthorne studies and how it started. And they found out that it is not only a monetary um, uh, values that motivates the employees, but there is also a humanistic psychological aspect where if you utilize it, you can also uh, motivate uh, your employees. So these theories uh, has been developing uh, through the real world, through uh, observations, through looking at us human beings, how we uh, act, interact, what are our attitudes, how do we behave, uh, and then was documented by scientists. So I've talked and talked and talked a lot, and I would like you, please, uh, if you would like to use the um, annotate and tell me what is your definition of the term theory. I am going to stop my sharing, and if you look at your screen on the top, you can use annotate. Is it enabled for everybody that they can uh, utilize annotate on Zoom? Uh, yes, yes, I gave them whole, everybody can share from them. Okay, so if you go on the top of the screen and you can see annotate, uh, you can start writing on it and tell me what is theory? What does the term theory means for you? Uh, we don't see it uh, like to write. Can you put the question in the chat? No, uh huh. Can you see it? Not yet. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Yeah. You can use text. You can draw. You can stamp. Use text and write. What does theory mean to you? Can you see what I wrote? Yes, mm. we see. Can you add? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and okay. theory is a set of rules and principles that describes something by, okay, and what? Anybody else? Well, somebody's writing in the chat, okay? If you wanna use the chat, no problem. I wanted to use your, <laughs> your screen, but I can't. <laughs> okay, it's not enabled for you, okay then. Yeah, I wanted to, that everybody would write here and see it. Mm -hmm. It's okay, we can see, you can use the chat, I'll stop it. You can use the chat. Mm. It is our, 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 our ideas you have. Okay, very good, Patricia. Who else? Yes. Seconds. As they shared, okay, why is it so? These are ideas you have. Anybody else would like to share? Yes. Okay. No. 
Professor, I ex accepted information. Okay. So, so far, some people are saying a theory is an accepted information. Uh, theories uh, is a set of rules and principles that describe something. Theories are ideas you have. Anybody else? Oh, theory is a rational type of abstract thinking about a phenomena or the results of such thinking. The process of contemplative and rational thinking is often associated with such process as observational study or research. Oh, Wikipedia. Theory is an idea which we observe based on our experiments. Oh, okay. Uh, anybody else wants to share before I move on? Uh, Dr. Sihan, wait, we have people on Facebook writing, so I will read you a few from Facebook. Oh, that's great. Excellent. Uh, 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 that's Dr. Great. Uh, Professor Charles Zeboria is writing that theory is integral to research and research is integral to theory. Also, he's writing a uh, theory guides the development of many research questions. Uh, it is not a definition of theory, but our dear trustee, Dr. Roshni, Roshni Lal is writing that every piece of information shared through, uh, through IAU by the expert is always relevant to the topic, purpose and Thesis. That is also one kind of definition of also theory. Okay. Okay. That's it. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's that's wonderful. It is. It's great. Now let's have a look. So let's have a look. What is what's a theory? So. Theories are formulated to explain, to predict, and to understand a phenomena. And I believe that somebody was mentioning uh, something similar to that, that it is an explanation uh, of phenomena. Also theories, in many cases, they challenge and they extend the existing knowledge with the limits of critical boundary assumptions, okay? So if you're going, for example, to say um, the students who attend class regularly score very, score very high marks, right? So that is your theory. That, uh, and then you start formulating the research and trying to find out, is this theory true or it's not true? So you are challenging the concept uh, uh, that the, the attendance is extremely important. Some of the people believe in that, some of the people do not believe in it. And you are trying to push the boundaries and find out. So you start formulating your research accordingly. The word theory has several meanings also. So like anything, any terminology, people uh, can define it, can explain it from their own field and perspective. So some of the meanings of theory is that it's a guess, it's a speculation. Uh, it is a law about something which cannot be seen directly. You cannot see it, see it but maybe you can uh, try to explain it like uh, elections or uh, the, sorry, electrons or the evolution. This is something that you can't see, uh, but it is demonstrated to other things. Also, a theory is an idea or set of ideas that is intended to explain something about life or maybe the whole world, uh, especially an idea that has not been proved to be true. 
So that is why you start from the theory in order to follow with uh, your research. So if we are going to, took an, a, to take an example of Einstein's, uh, Einstein's idea about uh, the uh, theory of relativity and uh, the theory of evolution. Um, so also the theoretical framework is it's a structure uh, that can hold or support a theory in order for you to start conducting your research study. Theoretical frameworks introduces and describes and explains a research problem. So you find a gap in the knowledge, you find there is a, a specific problem, you want to find solutions from it. So you start from this theory that is existing right now, and then you start building your research uh, in order to find an answer for that research problem. What are the different elements for uh, the theory? There are four elements. Uh, there is a what, uh, we start by what are uh, the variables or theory examined. So this is related to your research question. So which is formulated uh, through a process? So for example, you can say how effective uh, is the internet or the internet channels on the uh, communication among the employees in your organization? You can start from there. What is that effect? Then you follow by how. So in the how, these variables or concepts are actually related. So you are trying here, you are concerned for cause and effect. So for example, if you are going to be using a, a specific channel of communication, um, like um, emails, for example, um, has this uh, an effect on the employees, their level of awareness and behavior? If you are going to use um, emails versus, for example, if you are going to use those apps on our little uh, smart gadgets, so you're trying to find how here, the cause and effect. If you use this means of communication, how is it going to affect? Uh, the interaction among your employees versus another one. And why? Why you are trying to explain uh, the nature of the relationship. So if they are interacting with one, but they are not interacting with the other. So here you are trying uh, to increase um, the use of one communication uh, means. Um, you are investing in it because you believe uh, your employees in this organization are having better communication than other means of communication. So as you can see, all those theories, how you can utilize them uh, in an organizational setting, uh, in your, um, if you, or also in an educational setting, and also perhaps on your own uh, personal life. The fourth element, is when you are trying to uh, answer the who, the where, and when. So who does this theory apply to? So does it apply to all levels of employees? Is it applying, uh, or if we are talking in educational um, setting, uh, is it applying to all students? Is it applying to all uh, faculty members? Uh, or is it applying to admin staff? You see, there are uh, different types of uh, cohorts there uh, that you need to um, answer. Also, where does this theory apply? Where can you apply? Which setting? And uh, when does this theory apply? So you see, um, once you are trying to find all these explanations and the development of their th theory, this is going to help you to find the relationships that is existing and it will help you in order, where are you going to put your investment? Uh, where are you going to move forward according to those changes and the manipulations that is happening? So now, uh, I would like you please um, yeah. to think of a research topic that you are familiar with, 
whether yeah. you are working on it right now or you want to work on it. And I would like you please uh, to use those four elements and write down uh, uh, those, um, those questions, okay? So because we are going to use this later on at the end when you are writing your research proposal. So I am going to give you five minutes. Do you need to have a screenshot of, uh, of this slide? Would you like to have a, a screenshot of it? Because I am going to uh, stop the sharing. Okay, do you have the, um, do you have the screenshot? Okay, because I am going to put you now in, uh, I am putting it in the chat uh, in case uh, you didn't get it. Now uh, the, requirements is in the chat and I am going to put you in uh, breakout rooms. You have uh, five minutes. Please join the rooms. Okay, there's somebody who's not assigned. Uh, so let us assign this uh, person. There are two people uh, um, uh, in the waiting room. Uh, yes, I put, uh, they are in now, I put them. Okay, I need to put them now, uh, those people in rooms. So room, uh, can you please join the rooms? There are rooms that, uh, who's there? Somebody is in the way till people enter the waiting room. There are people who are not assigned. I'm not sure who's that who wants to enter. Yes, I don't know. Those, so. Yeah, where are those people? Where is the unassigned? I'm trying to assign them. This is not joined. Uh, okay. Assign to room one. To room one. Uh, I yeah. have somebody with a mobile. I don't know. I don't see the name. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Reza. Assign to room three. And uh, assign to room one. Assign to room four. Okay, assign to room one. Why are people not, not pressing join? Please uh, press join. They are not pressing the join. Join the rooms, they are not joining the rooms. Hmm. Please join the rooms, guys. 
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, join the rooms. Hello. Corina, you are in. Yes. I am in, but uh, I am in the classroom, so I don't know what exactly is, is uh, supposed we to do here. We must um, wait, I believe, for uh, Siham to send us something to work or, yes. or what? Mm -hmm. I, I will leave the breaking room. Leave. Uh, Deepa? Um, Nada? We are, yes, we, yes. When I, are was, I was in the breaking room with, uh, with Corina and Fiu, and they are waiting uh, there. What are they waiting for? For the, for the assignment. Okay, let me go and join them. They are supposed to. They are supposed to do it themselves. They're supposed to write a research question. Oh no, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the rooms. Okay, I, I'm I'm going to the rooms. Okay, I'll go and visit each room. But who is that? Uh... We have five unsigned participants. I am trying to allocate the ones who keep on go coming in. I'm allocating them in rooms. The, you know, when they come out, they will be asked, what have you done? <laughs> Deepa? Deepa? I can see Deepa is here, she's not joining. Those people, why aren't they joining? Angeline? Listen, people People come now on the workshop, but... Uh... Okay, I am... Okay, now, Nada, if you see me vanishing, I am visiting. I'm going to go and visit rooms, okay? Okay, okay. Do you know how to allocate them for rooms? Coming in. Do you know how to do it, or uh, shall I stay? Okay. I have Let four, us, I have you you make four break uh, rooms. Yeah, because they were uh, they were less than that. Now they have increased in numbers. So I am trying to make it all equal, but right now they've increased in numbers. Uh Corina, I did not allocate any room for her. She was in the room. Uh, was, was in the room. I was in a room, but I left because my students are noisy here, so I cannot control there. Okay, I'm with you here. <laughs> Okay, so I am going to go now. Uh, why are those people out there and they're not in rooms? Okay, I need to go and uh, we need to be discussing. Uh, okay, I better go and have a look. I better go and join these rooms and see what they are doing. See you later. Do you want? Okay. I, I, you, you need, I'm going to go to the rooms. Okay.
We are waiting them to come from the breaking rooms. Corina. Yes, Nada. Tell me. Please tell us, Dr. Siham, that she can come back from the break rooms because we, are, we can't go. We are not in life. She's not in life. Yeah, I know. I know, but she must uh, inform the people in breakout rooms what they have to do. That's what she's doing now, and after that, she will uh, come back. Yes. Uh, you may, uh, Nada, till uh, Dr. Siham will be back, uh, you may share something from IAU, for example, for two, three, four my minutes, will be, okay. will be okay for life. People also I'm joining. That was very interesting and an eye opener. Very interesting. So out of the four rooms, there are lots of people who didn't go to the to the breakout room. This is um, that is very good for us as education educationalists to see how the people are reacting, especially the adults. So now out of the four rooms. The only room, the fourth room, there was only one person talking, which is Armenia. And it was Professor Alan who had his camera on. The rest of the people, no camera on, no talking. So Dr. Sikham, we will, you can go without the break, uh, breakout rooms because yeah. You can you can continue without with the practice here. I'll, I'll have to bl bring them now, but it was very interesting because that when we say it's a workshop, they need to gain something out of it. They need to practically, it's to help them develop, actually come out at the end, learning something and practicing, coming out with the research question and a framework of how to write their proposal. That is the aim of that, that workshop. So, but anyway, it's an eye opener. I am learning too. It's a two way learning process here. Uh, let us uh, close the, the, the rooms.
So they will be back. So is everybody back now? No more uh, breakout rooms? No, there are still people uh, there. They are in, yes. Yeah, it is closing 21 uh, seconds, 20 more, 21 more seconds. Room four, they are still there. They're the biggest bulk there. Mm. Yes, room four. I was there, and obviously it is still keeping my name there, even though. Okay, I think everybody uh, come back. Everybody is back. Everybody's back. Okay, that's excellent. Okay, uh, now I will have to uh, comment on on that. Thank you very very much, everybody. Uh, welcome back uh, to the main room. But I can see that. Uh, that was a, a, a really um, eye-opener. Research problem is having gastric, uh, gastric, research questions. What are the common food do they eat? When do they eat? How much do they eat? Why do they eat much? Oh, okay. So somebody actually followed the the activity and did the research question. So let me let me let me share with you something. Now my theory <laughs> was that uh, at least ninety percent of the people in this workshop are going to be engaged and interactive. So when I use the breakout rooms, they are going to uh, interact and talk with each other. That was my theory, you see? So it came to practice and I wanted to uh, see it is uh, correct or not correct. Well, unfortunately, it is incorrect. My theory did not work out. And why? Because actually what happened is that it was only 10% that were interactive, not the 90. So it's the other way around. Out of the four rooms that I went to, it was only one room that they were, uh, not all of them even, a couple were talking and interacting. So this is a living example. Okay, welcome, welcome. Now let us go back to uh, uh, our uh, PowerPoint and see what is next. So, so we talked about what is theory. There is a lot of uh, misconception and sometimes misunderstanding and that happens with uh, lots of people. Um, they may believe that this is theory or that's theory. So let us uh, dissect it and clarify the things that we cannot say that these are theories. So, and this happens, uh, for example, with some of our students. Uh, so somebody may go there and start um, uh, finding references about different concepts and making a list. Uh, and uh, referring to those uh, theories that they researched and found them out and say that's a theory. Unfortunately, that is not a theory. So when you go and research and find what are the theories out there, you still, as a researcher, you need to uh, identify the concept within these theories, uh, the causal relationships, uh, the logical explanations, and uh, how it works, okay? How it's related to your own work. Once you do that, that can become a theory, but you can just make a list of theories and say, oh, that's a theory, okay? That's one thing. The other thing is also data. 
So you cannot just go and collect data and put it there and say, that's my theory. No, you have to give detailed, clear descriptions of the relationships, the patterns that is resulting from the collection of your data and the analysis uh, in relation to those theories. When you are talking about theories, this requires logical explanation in order to discuss those relationships and those patterns that you came up and you found them as a result of analyzing the data that you collected, okay? The other thing also, you cannot go and list and say this is the, a list of variables for my theory. You Again, you need to explain them. How did they develop, okay? Also, diagrams. Some of the people can go and put a diagram and I've seen it a lot happening with lots of my students. They can write those beautiful diagrams and present it and put it there and tell you that's my theory. That's the model of my theory. With no explanation. You need <laughs> to explain it. If you do not explain it, this diagram, that figure, that model, what does it mean? What is the relationship between this box and that box? The, each box and the shape of it and the arrows coming in and out going to different direction has got a significance and a meaning but you need to also explain it and write the relationship of things that's happening how they are related what, what how do you explain it in that figure or diagram also hypotheses and predictions you need they are part on, and of the process of developing your theory and testing it. But they are not the theory. They are not the theory itself. They are part of the process, okay? Oh. I think this time we are going to use a different way, which is uh, you can, uh, if you want to raise your uh, hand, you know the icon of raising your hand uh, there, the icon down at the bottom, and you share your opinion, you talk. So first thing is that why theory is important to your learning process. And the second one is why theory is important to your research process. There are two different things. So in other words, theory has got an impact to our learning process. And it also has got an impact to our research process. So now I give the rack out to you. Who would like to talk first? Okay, I don't see anybody's hands uh, up. Uh, the two questions are now in the chat field, if you want to look at them again. Yes, yes, please. Yes, Patricia. Patricia, Sorry, unmute. Hello. Yes, hello. I, I, I think a theory is very important in the learning process especially with our students because that's where they come up with ideas to go and explore uh, for example if it is a science lesson they go outside and they explore and they come up with their own uh, ideas about that theory and they can write a project or come up with a project so it is a guide it ad it um it helps them understand more of the concept that they are learning. Very good. Thank, Thank you very much, Patricia. So what about um, the uh, importance of research for you? Um, oh, sorry, for, three, for theory for your research? Uh, theory is uh, important for research because that is the beginning of my research. If I've got a theory, 
then I will be able to look at um, uh, maybe analyze whatever I am going to talk about. For example, if I am, my theory is on, I might uh, maybe in a school, children uh, after break, they are very energetic in the classroom. Then that's the theory that I should come up with. And then I start to ask questions about why is this happening? Is it because uh, of something that they've eaten after break? So then I come up with questions that will guide me to answer. And then I come up with a project or a research project on that one. Thank you. Oh, thank you very, very much. Oh, thank you, Patricia, for sharing. Anybody else, please? Anybody? Yes, Corina? Unmute, please. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me because uh, it's a lot of noise in my no, classroom. No, no, we can hear you clearly. Yeah, Don't worry. sorry, sorry. Okay. Anybody else? Shall I start calling names? <laughs> Dr. Alan, we would like to welcome you from the Cameron. It's lovely to see you with us today. Kindly unmute to share with us your pearls of wisdom. I can't hear you. I can just see your laughter. Can you unmute, please? No? Yes, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Yes, that's wonderful, yes. So, tell us, what do you think? No, I don't have any special thing to say. Uh, I was listening to uh, the, those who were talking. Uh, I just want to hear from them. I will come later. I will tell you, I will share with you my thoughts. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, Thanks a lot. Anwar, I can see you writing in the chat. Can you talk to us, please, about uh, your uh, thoughts? OK. Mm -hmm. Anwar? I will try to talk. I am in class. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. um, the concept of theory uh, does not have a uh, universally accepted definition. The theory is defined as the set of hypotheses, laws, and concepts organized in a logical system of coherent that describes and explains a field of knowledge. Uh, I know when I was making my research that Campbell defines the theory as being a collection of statements, verbal or symbolic, that identify which are the important variable and why specific, how they interact, and why, and identify the condition under which they correlate or it doesn't correlate because is they suspect. Um, about um, another um, important person, Spada considers that the theory is a complex of statements and the assumption that generates it hypothesis and tries to provide explanation about human behavior uh, psych in a certain context. Uh, moreover, the development of theory is one of the fundamental goals of science. We can identify theory behind any research because every time uh, the researcher tries to find an explanation for the fact studies, even if this explanation is, uh, incom is incomplete and limited, this is normal and natural because scientific, uh, scientific theory cannot never give a complete and final description of reality. They will be approximation of nature of things. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Armenia. You're welcome. You're welcome. Sorry for noise. I'm in class. Sorry. No worries at all. Okay. Uh, Professor Siham. Yes. Yes. Uh, just to go to to come with my thought here. You know, um, theory is 
uh, can be like for us a starting point in our research, meaning that you have a basic knowledge about what you are looking for, and that, that theory can guide you in order to reach the point, to reach the final point where you are going. Meaning that without a theory, you are going to be a bit lost because you are not going to have a starting point where you can start in order to build your research or to try to understand where you want to go. But with theory here, you already have basic information. And now you need to say, are ah, these information that I have are true or false? Or through this theory, can I uh, apply it to this uh, area or I cannot apply it, it cannot be applied to this area? I'm giving an example of the theory of uni university-based entrepreneurship ecosystem. Some yeah. of these research were based, were done, were conducted in the North, meaning that in US or in Europe. Now, you have a theory based on another environment, environment that we call Europe or, or United States. This, this, through this theory, we can do the same thing in Africa or in Australia or I don't know, somewhere else. That theory we're going to, that we already have, we're going to assist us whether to conduct the research to confirm or not to confirm what we already have through that theory. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Alan. Thank you for sharing with us uh, your uh, interpretation and uh, your explanation, the detailed explanation. Thank you. Okay, let's have a look at here. What is it? Mm. So we are going to look at theory and its importance. Uh, Dr. Siham, I mute because there is a noise, so please everybody mute yourself. Dr. Siham, unmute you. Okay. Um. I didn't uh, mute myself, but anyway, it's okay. Uh, thank you very, very much, uh, Professor Alan, and thanks uh, for other participants uh, uh, mentioning uh, what do they believe uh, the importance of theory. So let us have a look at it. If we are going to look at it from a learning uh, perspective, it actually provides us a, a better understanding of how people learn. So as uh, educators, uh, we need to uh, have our theories in relation to the adult education field, for example, um, to help us um, uh, find out how do we do our best for our students, how do uh, we describe and analyze all the data that we are collecting, and this is, of course, to help us to be the best uh, for them. It also helps us to make informed decisions whether uh, we are deciding to uh, um, give them support or uh, we are trying to develop new curriculums, uh, we are trying to develop new courses, or we are trying to find new strategies, new tools, how to manage our classrooms, uh, how, uh, what type of assessments we, win, we want to provide for them, uh, what are the processes to be done, so it can help us from a learning perspective to enhance on our own um, skills uh, in order to be able to serve our students the best possible way and also to uh, look at the latest trends in the educational field and how are we going to live up to it. Uh, for an organization, for example, to be competitively advantaged. So theory is rooted in our everyday life. And it is extremely important because it supports our decision making, which also impacts on our actions. If we are going to look at uh, the importance of uh, research, 
the importance of theory from the research perspective. Um, as I demonstrated to you, it can help you to answer the what, the why, and the how uh, when you are posing your questions. Some of the participants already put uh, some of their questions on the chat. Uh, it is also helping us to formulate the process of our research and how we are going to go about it. We are in a globalized, ever-changing world, and we have to be uh, creative and innovative, uh, and that happens only through change, which is, is supported by research. Now, how are we going to develop theory? There are um, three uh, ways of doing it. So when you're developing a theory, it is how are you going to um, put your research question and your research objectives? So there is the deductive, uh, the inductive and the abductive ways. If we are going to look at the deductive, and you can tell uh, from the words deductive, you are trying to deduce. So the reasoning here occurs when uh, the conclusion is actually derived logically from a set of premises. So you are putting those premises, and if all of them you tick, Yes, 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 yes. So you are deducing the result that this theory is correct. That's it. So let's just take an example. So if you are uh, making uh, a research uh, for an uh, online retail sales um, and you are launching a new games console. So if we're going to look at the following premises and you have to tick them all. So the online retailers have been um, allocated limited stock of the new games consoles by the manufacturer. That's the first one. Second premise, uh, the customer's demand for the consoles exceeds the supply. Third premise, the online retailers allow customers to pre-order the consoles before they hit the mark, okay? So in this case, if these premises are true, all of them, tick, 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 true, then we can deduce that uh, the conclusion that online retailers sold their entire allocation of the new game consoles by the release day. Then if all of them tick, then it's true, okay? So this is what it means by deducing. You put premises, if you tick on them and they're all correct, then that theory is true. And this is called deductive. Okay? Okay, so, let us move on. We're not gonna make another activity, move on. Let us look at the inductive. So the inductive uh, here in developing your theory, this is a gap. You are going to find a gap between the conclusion and the premises that you have put. So for example, the news media are reporting that the online retailers are complaining about only being allocated limited stock of the new game consoles by the manufacturer. The second one is that the news media reporting that the demand of the consoles will exceed the supply. The third one is that the online retailers are allowing customers to pre-order the console. So in this one, you are trying to find where is the gap, okay? So not all of them are going to be ticked. Not all of them are going to be correct. So based on these um, assumptions, observations, we have good reasoning to believe that the online retailers sold their entire allocations to the new game consoles by the release day. 
So nevertheless, even though our conclusions is supported by observation, it is not guaranteed as true. We are not really sure. You're trying to find the gap here. This is the difference. Now, if we are going to go to the abductive, and that one begins with surprising fact, something that you actually did not expect. While you're observing, something popped up that you never expected, and that was a surprise for you, okay? So based on the conclusion, a set of possible premises is determined. And by the way, here you are developing as a result a theory, okay? So if we are going to put them all, and the theory, when you are doing a deduction, the theory is actually a verification. You're either saying it is right or it is wrong in the deduction method. You take them all, it's correct. You don't take them all, then it's wrong. In the inductive, you are actually trying to find out and build. You're trying to find out conclusion. You're trying to find out relations. In the abductive, and this is when you are actually incorporating an existing theory, when you are finding something that was surprising and you did not expect. So if we look at the pyramid, actually there are different types of theories according to that pyramid. So if you are starting from the bottom of the pyramid and going higher to the higher level of theories, you are increasing the capacity to change and the way we think about the whole world. So it is more a revolutionary, you're going up the hill, up the theory. But if you are going down, you are actually increasing the restrictions of the general application. So let's look at what each one of them means. So if we're looking at the grand theories, which is the top of the pyramid, as you can see there, those grand theories, of course, they don't come every day and they are not by um, every person. Uh, these are um, natural scientists. These are uh, revolutionary uh, um, earth shattering theories like the theory of gravity, uh, uh, Darwin's theory of evolution, Einstein's theory of relativity. Those are the grand theories. The middle range theories are, those are the ones that um, lack the capacity to change the way in which we think about the world, okay? Not for example, like uh, uh, the men originated uh, uh, the evolution of us, we evoluted from the apes, okay? It is not like that, it's different. Uh, and these middle range theories, we have a lot of them. And I gave you before the example of Maslow's hierarchy of needs and it, how it is important for the motivation. So you start from the bottom of the pyramid, uh, which is the basic needs. Uh, the basic needs are fulfilled. Then you move uh, to the uh, esteem and this is uh, fulfilled. You move to the higher uh, need. Uh, the affiliation and the social interaction, this one is fulfilled, you move to the highest level, which is the self-actualization, okay? Another very well-known and uh, popular theory is um, McGregor, AXMI, and this actually talks about managers and how the managers um, act and interact and deal with their um, employees. And for us also educators, maybe we are like that. So a manager X believes that um, those employees are lazy. Do you have to use uh, the carrot or stick, which is mainly the stick. And um, uh, this is the only way to motivate them. You have to micromanage them, be all the time on top of their head versus a Y manager who actually believes that no uh, um, human beings 
can actually be motivated. Uh, you, can, you don't need to micromanage them. They can sit there and do their jobs. You don't need to be on top of the reds all the time. So these are different styles. And even though those theories are in the early 1950s, but we still use them until today, believe it or not. And actually, I have seen firsthand experience people who are like that. Actually, it's true. Uh, the other one is the substantial theories, which is the bottom of the pyramid. And this is um, uh, the type where you are trying to have a group of uh, uh, problems. It can be uh, the impact of cost saving within your organization. Uh, it can be on your own classroom and your own teaching. Um, a special type of uh, special needs students or how in special cases like that, um, not as the other types of theories. So, so these are different uh, uh, contributions. You may look at your research, um, what you are doing. For example, the first activity for today was asking you to uh, draft a research question. So look at that, that topic, that area that you are researching in right now, and where does it fit? And what type of theory that is relating to, okay? Any, any questions so far? Because we are going to move now to another part of this uh, workshop. I can see that there are a few uh, things in the chat. Okay. Any, any questions? Okay. Uh, no, no questions. Let us move to the next phase and the next part of uh, this workshop, which is actually to do with um, writing your research proposal. Okay, how are we going to do that? Uh, we use this in, in different fields and different aspects. So before we start doing anything, we need to ask ourselves why? Why do you want to write a research proposal? Every human being doesn't do anything if they do not know and tell themselves what's in it for me, right? What's in it for me? What is the benefit? How am I going to benefit from it? Or why am I doing it? So we need to understand what is the goal. So the goal uh, is to present your plan. You are the author. You are the owner of that research. So. You are introducing what is, what is it? What is your plan? What do you intend to do? Okay, so part of that, you are trying to put this proposal because you want funding. And that happens anywhere and everywhere. Uh, you can be at work and you want to have, you know, to get funding from your boss. Uh, from another department. Um, you can be in an educational institute and you want to go and do a research project. So you also have to, you want to have funding for it. That and funding can be money. It can be time. It can be uh, different types of support. So you have to have a budget also within that. Uh, uh, you can have, of course, if you are a student, and you want to apply. For example, where I work now, I work in one of the indigenous universities here in New Zealand. And uh, they have a master's for indigenous people. So in order to accept them to actually study in that master's, they have to submit a proposal. And in their proposal, they have to come with an idea and say, what is it that they want to research? So they have to write a proposal. They, they are trying to filter the students and make sure that they are actually serious, that they are not gonna waste anybody's time and they, they're really interested in doing research. So they're asking them from the beginning to put a plan. Of course, when you are doing masters in different universities, you're doing a PhD, 
uh, you are applying for any research grant. Um, so you use research proposals in different aspects and fields. So it's a requirement. Okay. So you need to, uh, that is, see which one is your goal, because according to the goal, you have to tailor it accordingly. But most of them, basic structure is all the same. Let's go through that. So when you are, uh, what does it tell this, the aim of it? You are writing this proposal. What is it that you're trying to say? You are trying to say as an author, as a researcher, how and why you are going to do this research. What is your reason? And of course, in which field you are going to do it? Uh, is it uh, education? Is it, for example, organizational behavior? Is it technology? Is it leadership? What is it? So you are trying to demonstrate uh, your capabilities, of course, your knowledge, you are trying to show uh, that you know that there is a gap of information, there is a gap in the body of knowledge, and your research will fill that gap, okay? Or you want to shed light and clarify a certain phenomena that already exists, but you want to look at it, for example, from a different angle. You want to clarify it or you want to add to the original body of knowledge that already exists to help uh, an existing community, to help people understand things. So there has to be some value of that research and uh, somebody who is gonna benefit, of course, uh, out of it. So in your research proposal, you are demonstrating your capabilities, your skills, the value of conducting this research and how is it going to contribute to who is going to be your audience and how are you going to contribute to them in a valuable manner that is the key thing so there are important aspects that has to be highlighted and mentioned in your research proposal so what are they First thing, most importantly, of course, after you've searched for the topic, you know what is the topic, you wrote your research question, you put your theories, all these things. So now, how are you going to go about it? So you need to demonstrate your plan. What is going to be your methodology? What are the tools that you are going to collect your data? How are you going to analyze this data? And then how are you going to explain it? What is the budget? What is the time frame? What are the constraints? When you put all these things, it demonstrates your knowledge that you know what you're doing. Because you want that proposal to be accepted, to be approved. And if you're asking for money to get the money you're asking for, if you're asking for time, uh, you get your time. If you're asking for other, um, uh, uh, if it's a project and you want people to work with you, you, you get them too. So it's vital that you are detailed and you are clear and you demonstrate that knowledge, this capability. So. We said methodology. Some people will say, oh, there are lots of people, by the way, that I've noticed over the years that they have a little bit of mix up about the word methodology and methods of data collection. Oh, lot of people fall in that trap. So when we're talking about methodology, we need to decide, is it going to be qualitative or is it going to be quantitative? So to make your life easy from just the words. Quantitative means number, numbers. Qualitative, which means you're going deeper. You're asking different questions. You are more detailed. It's to do with words. Let us look at... Uh, what is qualitative research and what is quantitative research? This is very, I, I'm just, what you call it, I'm scratching just the surface. Just 
the surface. So when you are doing a quantitative, you are focusing on testing theories and hypotheses, uh, while qualitative, you are actually exploring ideas and you are formulating the theory or the hypothesis. When we talk about quantitative, it's to do with statistical analysis, mathematics, numbers. Uh, but when you are talking about qualitative, it is uh, to do with um, summarizing, interpreting, describing, uh, going into analyzing and more depth. Uh, when we talk about quantitative, it is, as I mentioned, it's you are going to demonstrate your results or your analysis in tables and graphs and numbers. Uh, but when it is qualitative, you are going to demonstrate it more in words. You can also have uh, figures if you want, if you want to have a model, but you have to explain it, of course. In quantitative, uh, you are actually requesting a lot uh, of numbers in order to be able to have validity and reliability. So when we come to the methods of collecting data, surveys, for example, in order to be uh, um, reliable, you need to have big numbers. Uh, but when we are having uh, um, qualitative, it's different. So um, lots of the methods that is used there is case studies, and it is not as huge numbers as the quantitative. Um, uh, also, uh, you can have um, multiple questions uh, when you're using um, quantitative. Uh, you use open questions when you are using qualitative. Um, if we are going to look, how are you collecting the methods? Um, the methods of collecting data, it differs from quantitative to qualitative. Again, this is just very simple. Uh, um, explanation for it. There is a lot of depth and uh, um, that requires a lot more time than this workshop. So the quantitative uh, data collection methods, you do surveys, it's to do with the numbers, uh, it's to do with questions you can have like a scale of uh, numbering, uh, like, uh, don't like, uh, rarely this and that, how many people liked, how many people disliked, how many people did not uh, are on the border, uh, you also do experiments in the lab, uh, for example, to find the cause and effect and relationships, uh, and, and sometimes also you do observations. Uh, if we are going to look at uh, the um, qualitative ones, you do interviews, uh, in-depth interviews, you have open-ended questions, uh, there is also the focus groups, and the focus groups is used a lot in market research, um, lots of organizations commission other uh, specialized organizations to do for them uh, the focus groups, uh, but you can also use it in your research. There is also ethnography uh, where you are. This requires a lot of extended time and it is mainly used when you are observing closely um, different cultures and behaviors um, and documenting that. There is also literature review. Um, which is you are collecting all the data and the information that has been published by other scientists and trying to analyze it and trying to come up with your own interpretations in order to add to the body of knowledge. Uh, there is also the mixed method approach. And the mixed method approach is when you are using both qualitative and quantitative and whether in your methodology and also in your data collection methods. Um, I have used this approach and there are lots of people nowadays who are using that. So you can start, for example, with uh, qualitative and then you end up having open questions and then you later on, you want to go and do surveys. You can follow up on it or vice versa. You can start with doing surveys and getting the numbers and, uh, and how many people uh, accept it and versus how, people, how many people don't. And then you decide you want to delve deeper and you want to understand the reasons behind their answers. So you start to do qualitative and ask them open-ended questions to explain to you, to give you more rich uh, data and information uh, about 
why, what is the reason um, be behind this behavior or uh, their attitudes or these numbers. You want to explain those numbers, what do they mean? So analyzing uh, the data uh, also, you have different techniques, of course. If you are using qualitative, the way you analyze it is different than you are using quantitative. So the quantitative, it is a statistical analysis. Uh, there are different packages that has been used like Excel, SPSS, lots of them. It shows you correlations, causations, reliability, validity, all these things um, that you can use when you're doing quantitative. Just put the numbers and then know how to use the software and it uh, would give you the result. Uh, the qualitative, lots of people say it is uh, a little bit more tricky or a little bit more difficult. Look, there are people who prefer qualitative versus other people who prefer quantitative. Uh, there are also packages and softwares right now that actually uh, are also utilized for uh, the qualitative. And uh, to name some, uh, there is a nudist and there is uh, other softwares that would help you in order to analyze. You put the data in. Um, the different styles and techniques also, you can do thematic analysis and you can do discourse analysis. So you're going deeper, you're trying to find what are the different themes uh, that you can um, deduce uh, from the interviews that you've conducted. It is time consuming, but uh, the results are really worth it at the end. So this is uh, just to show you a little bit of uh, what is available for you. If we go back uh, to that slide where it mentioned, yes, these are the basic content, um, the basic things that need to be in your research proposal. So in other words, when you are going to do this research proposal, you need to do your homework first. You need to prepare yourself. Then you start writing. So let us look at an example. So this is uh, just uh, an example of a structure uh, that you can have in your research project. Let us uh, enlarge this a little bit so that everybody can see it. Is that better? Uh, can you see it uh, clearer now? Uh, yes, we can. Yeah. So anyway, so this one, as you can see, um, there is a certain format and there is a certain structure um, that um, you have to uh, demonstrate when you're writing your proposal. So um, there are different sections, as you can see, uh, the preliminary section, the research and the background discussion, the methodology approach, uh, the program management, and then the supplementary section. So in your first one, of course, it is very important, those details that um, the title page, uh, your abstract, uh, the table of contents, if there is any glossary, if uh, you have a, a specialized field uh, that you have a specific terminologies or a lot of acronyms that you are using uh, if you used a lot of tables, if you lose a lot of figures, all these things have to be mentioned there. It is um, very important um, uh, to give attention uh, to the structure and the neatness of the proposal because that piece of work, um, it demonstrates who you are. Um, how it is structured, how it is presented um, is very important. It can make it um, be accepted or rejected. Uh, if, uh, of course, you have to proofread it and proofread it and proofread it and make sure there is no typos, uh, there is no errors, uh, there is page numbers, uh, every, you've dotted every I, you've slashed every T um, because that demonstrates who you are. And it talks on your behalf, okay? Uh, so you also, after that section, you need to write what is your research problem and what is the rationale? Why? Why do you believe this is a problem? You have to explain it. So and you also have to have literature review and literature review is very important, which demonstrates 
done your homework. You went out there, you researched this field, you researched that topic, you researched this area, you found out where is the gap? What is the issue? So it is a well-informed decision that you want to go and pursue that topic. You are also justifying that research question. You write your objectives, your hypothesis, it is significant. The scope and limitations is extremely important. Some of the people think that this is only in research pro in, in projects when you are going to do projects. It is everywhere, it is you say, this is my scope, this is the only thing that I'm looking at. And I have limitations. And these are the limitations. So you are demonstrating you've done your homework. If you remember, I don't know, a couple of hours ago when we first started, what did I tell you? I gave you the title and I told you what is the context? From which angle am I going to be talking about the role of theory to research? That field of theory and that field of research is humongous. We can talk about it for hours and hours and hours and days and days and days and months and months and months. But it's impossible to cover every single aspect from those hour and a half or couple of hours that we have together. So at the beginning, I gave you the scope. I told you what is the framework and I listed for you by the end of this workshop, you will have the answers for this and this and this and that. These are my limitations, and I am not going to cover more than that, okay? Now, in your proposal, it's very important you show and demonstrate that. Then the following thing is your methodology. Um, what methodology are you going to be using? Are you going to be using qualitative, or are you going to be using quantitative, or are you going to be using mixed methods? And according to your decision, that will impact on what type of um, data collection methods you are going to be using because they differ. And also what uh, tools are you using to analyze your collected data, okay? So you are proposing that, of course, you do not have the answers. So that is going to be brief and you have to justify it. Why do you believe? that this method, the qualitative is the best for this research question, or the quantitative is the best for this research question, that your research question also impacts on what methodology approach you're going to be using. And then, of course, you need to look at the ethical considerations. How are you going to keep the data? How you are going to keep the anonymity of the participants? How you are going to take their consents? What are the potential risks? What could be the problems and all these things? And of course, if there is a timeline, you have to write the timeline. You allocate this month, I'm doing this, that month I'm doing that. So you are um, providing a Gantt chart. Uh, how is the progress going to be? Um, there is a beginning and there is an end for everything. And then of course, at the end, you are going to be uh, putting your list of references. If there is uh, any other documentations or appendices that you want to add, you would put it there. So that structure and that format can apply to any field you are specialized in. Now, this is an example also. The other important thing is that you have a checklist. Have I done this? Have I done that? Did I follow this? Did I follow that? It is exactly, let me tell you in a layman's term. We wake up in the morning, we make a list of things to do and we prioritize them. Some people by one, two, three, some people by A, B, C, some people by the top to bottom, whatever floats your boat, do it. Whatever fits with you, do it. There are different ways. There is no one way fits all. There are different styles, different tools, different ways that you can use. This is another example for you also of our proposal that you can just uh, formulate. Um, some of the people like to put words, some people like to put figures, some people like tables. 
uh, some people uh, express themselves and demonstrate their skills in different ways. You can use them all. When I was doing my thesis, I used everything. I used mixed methods. I used tables. I used figures. I used paragraphs. I used models. I used everything to please everybody and to cater for any reader who is going to read my PhD. That's what I did. But other people may um, decide another way uh, to deal with it. So, of course, uh, we are running out of time, so there will be no activity, but this activity was for you, and it is built on the first one of your research question, so that you follow on it, you decide what is your topic, uh, what are you uh, uh, proposing to do for this research, what is your research question, uh, what is the background information that you have collected, uh, and then, of course, your methodology, your chosen methodology, uh, your chosen um, data collection, which fits with it, and accordingly, how you're going to analyze it, the timeline of your project, what is the budget, and the conclusion. So that was to help you in order to write your research proposal. Now, uh, this activity, I am not gonna let go and I want you all to do it, please. So I want you to reflect uh, for a minute or two and I want you to please say what are three things that you have learned from this workshop and what was um, uh, any information that uh, was unexpected that you gained from this workshop and at least one tool or one technique that you are planning to incorporate in your future practice. Okay? So you have a couple of minutes. Because I think we are already way over time. <laughs> mm. <laughs> way, way, way over time. Way. <laughs> so let us see what is in the chat. So these reflections, let us put them in. I'm going to put this in the chat because I am going to stop sharing. So these are in the chat now. Professor I can see Dunga, that there is some very, very informative and great workshop. I think that all participants learn a lot and also can write the differences and can write what they learn today because many new things and big, great explanations uh, almost going from the definition of the theory because many people still don't understand the difference between the theory and uh, doing it in the practice and when you are writing a research paper from going to the hypothesis till the end. So here we get today many informations and I think that the conclusion is really that uh, who is uh, who 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 goes uh, active through this and who is listening and participate participating have many many new knowledges. Uh, so, is there uh, is there anybody who answered? Um, uh, uh, yes, we, yes, we have we have answers. Uh, difference yeah. between inductive and deductive theory. Professor Ellen learns that. Uh, Professor Patricia says the goals of research and how to formulate a research topic and the structure of a report. Great. The difference between qualitative and quantitative research. 
Ermina said the premises of the scientific method, differences and similar theories between inductive and deductive theory. Yes, because here today are great, uh, give great explanations between the differences in uh, qualitative, quantitative research, inductive, deductive theory, because the science is uh, really, uh, uh, the science is going in many fields and it is not the same to make a research paper from biology or from history. Uh, by the way, guys, I saw on the, the chat that there is a form uh, that you need to fill, I think. Anyway, um, thank you for uh, your um, participation. Um, for the sums, the, some of the people who uh, don't want to uh, talk, but they want to jot it down, that would be a very good exercise for you. I would like to actually uh, summarize it. So today we discussed actually some of the misconceptions about the term theory uh, by explaining what does it mean? It's important uh, for both the field of research and the field of education. So, and we demonstrated the link between theory and research the four elements of theory, uh, clarifying what theory is, uh, how to develop your theory, the four types of theoretical contributions, value and structure of research proposal, and finally, how to write your research proposal. Accordingly, uh, I would like to conclude by saying that theory is part of our everyday life. So it is really important to recognize it and make it explicit importance in research. Too. These are the references, and I would like to uh, end by a uh, quote. Uh, research is to see what everybody else has seen and to think what nobody else has thought. You have your own way, your own addition, uh, your own creativity to add to what you write. Research is creating new knowledge. And I hope, and I wish that today with this workshop, I contributed even a drop in the ocean um, to create some um, means and way of new knowledge for the participants. Uh, thank you very much. And I wish you all the best in uh, your research, uh, whether it's personal or whether it's your career. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Siham, on this great workshop. Uh, really impressive. Uh, many knowledge, uh, many new things, uh, as I said before. Thank you. Uh, from our side, this is really an amazing and unique workshop. And thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you by the International Internship University. And uh, I would like to thank all the participants who worked here today and uh, express a gratitude to our uh, co-founders, Mr. Piyush Pandit, who is giving us this great platform, this great IAU. Uh, and this, uh, what say more, a great experience. And I think uh, a really important topic for everybody who is doing research, who is writing, not only a research paper, but an, uh, an article, anything you need to know uh, how to make a concept, how to make an abstract and how to do the structure of the work. Uh, thank you. Thank you to everyone. And we will be soon back uh, with new events. Uh, today, uh, we have another workshop. Uh, it is the last day of the workshop. Please join it. You can see today also many examples of good practice in product design. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy, and build a sustainable, bright future with Aya U. Thank you. Thank you all for your attendance. Bye, 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 bye. Thank you, Barbara.